In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once again before the Lord, we come Acknowledging, first of all, the times that we have sinned against him and against our neighbor. We ask him again for his mercy that we might be made worthy to receive and to participate in these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. in the highest and on earth peace to be full of good we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice, who knows no favorites, though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. Lord is not, the Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the most high response. Judges justly and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The A reading from the, le the second letter to Timothy. Beloved, I'm already being poured out like the liberation, and the time of my departure is at, is at hand. And I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, from the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord and the just, the judge, will award to me one day on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have lodged for his appearance. And at my first offense, no one be heard on my behalf. But everyone deserted me may not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. So through the proclaimants might be completed. And the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord was, will rescue me from every evil threat. And will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us are convinced of our own righteousness? How many times do we say, well, I'm a good person, right? And then think that we're not necessarily in need of God's forgiveness. And even look down on others. That's a, Jesus then addresses the parable to those who are convinced of their own righteousness and despise everyone else. And we have the example of the Lord is uh, doing something that's very peculiar to us, but also very good. To recognize that here's this Pharisee on the one hand, who in the eyes of the people of God, the Pharisee, of course, is a leader among the people. He's the one who seems to be doing everything right. And he's even, the Pharisee in this case, is even pointing out how he does everything right. The problem is that he has no recognition of his need for God's mercy, of his need even for God's help. He thinks he can do it on his own. We should think of that even in the world today in terms of even priests who might be seen in some ways as the Pharisees of our day. So how is it that priests even, we think of perhaps sometimes as, well, this person is a priest, so they must be someone who is doing good. But is their heart really there with the Lord also? Are they recognizing that they are just as much in need of God's mercy as anyone else on the face of the earth? So we should think of it in that sense, but also in the sense of where do I recognize myself as being? Do I think, well, I'm just a good person and I don't have any need of God in my life, and so I just walk through my life thinking in that way and acting in that way as if God's sort of out there somewhere, but I have no need to glorify him, no need to go to the temple area even perhaps, to go to church. It's a good thing for us to stop and think about because it's about humbling ourselves before the Lord. And that's the message at the end of the gospel that Jesus gives to us. The one who humbles himself will be exalted, but the one who exalts himself will be humbled. And on the other hand, then we have the tax collector. And the tax collector is the one who does, he's the one that everybody dislikes, right? No one in the time, and nothing has changed in the sun. How many of you like the IRS? Raise your hands. Somebody might work for the IRS here, so you should probably all raise it. I'm just kidding. 
But there's this tax collector that nobody likes. People are in the society in which they lived, they would have thought of that person as a horrible person. They cheated people. They did all of the things wrong that they weren't supposed to do. And here Jesus is saying, look, here's this guy who recognizes that he is a sinner and in need of God's mercy, in need of God's grace. He's not even, he can't even find the strength in, his cell, in himself to even raise his eyes to heaven, that gospel said to us. He simply beats his breast and says, says to the Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner." That should be the mentality of every one of us. We should recognize that each and every one of us, good people though we may be, because we are created in the image and likeness of God, not because of what we do or don't do. We're good because we're created in the image and likeness of God, but then where do we go from there? Do we just say, well, I'm good enough, and so I don't need to worry about anything else? No, that's not the case. We need to recognize that. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord, recognize that we are in need of him at every turn. And then we can look at the second reading with uh, St. Paul, right? And he can seem almost like he's being prideful in some ways, which seems to be contrary to what uh, Jesus is talking about in the gospel I am already being poured out like a libation. The time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, a crown of righteousness awaits me. How can he presume that? Because he has served the Lord faithfully. He has recognized in himself, and we see this in, throughout his writings, he's rec recognized in himself that he is at every moment in need of God's grace, in need of God's mercy. He recognizes that he himself is a sinner. And yet at the same time, he has also done what the Pharisees had done, and that he had poured, they had poured out their lives in service to God, and he in particular more than most, right? Giving his whole life, suffering time and time and time again for proclaiming this message of the Lord Jesus. Then we hear, even in that first reading, that the servants of God, the Lord, will hear them. We heard it also in the psalm. Those who serve the Lord will be saved. That is our call, even as human beings, not just as Catholics or Christians, but as human beings, to serve the Lord our God, to recognize that each and every one of us are in need of the Lord our God. Not to be complacent in the life in which we live. Not to just say, well, I've got enough. And that's probably part of the difficulty in the world in which we live in our first world country, right? I can do it on my own. I have all of the things that I need. I don't need God. Well, that's good for this life, perhaps. But even those things can be taken away from us in a heartbeat. I can't even tell you the number of people that I've encountered in my life as a priest also who felt like they had everything in life, a good job, they had a family that surrounded them, they had friends that surrounded them, they had their house, their car, all of the things that they needed, and in a moment it was gone. Something happened in their life, and all of a sudden that was removed. Those things can all be taken away from us. The one thing that no one can ever take away from us is the salvation that the Lord our God offers to us. If we have avail ourselves of his mercy, if we open our hearts to his mercy, if we're seeking that, if we're seeking to follow him in our lives, then we're going to receive the reward of eternal life. Not just of the good things of this world, but the great things of eternal life. But we can't just take those things for granted either, making an assumption that, I, well, I'm fine on my own. The Lord even reminds us that it's the one who humbles himself that is justified, not the one who exalts himself. So we come before the Lord, seeking to humble ourselves again, recognizing that at every turn, you and I are in need of his mercy and in need of his grace. 
That's why we come back here also time and again to receive the Lord Jesus himself. He gives us, gives us his own strength, his very self, so that we might live the life, that we might serve him faithfully. And then at the end of our own lives, enter into eternal life in heaven with God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you recognizing once again our great need to humble ourselves before you, seeking again and again your mercy, your life, your love in our own lives and in the life of our entire world. And so we offer our prayers for ourselves and for those throughout the world that the church may be a sure haven for sinners and outcasts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those we elect to office in the state may protect widows, orphans, the aged, and the homeless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That believers may deepen their prayer and penance by meditating on the mysteries of the rosary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and suffering, especially Laura D. Eifert, Roque, and Grace Mercarter, and the Owen family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ will give his crown of righteousness to our dead departed, especially Julian Torres, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Joe Cusum, for whom this Mass is being offered and for the prayers in our book of intercessions, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers in accordance with your holy will. For we ask them through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, Eusebio and Frank, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Joy, that's your saving. 
May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God. Before you go forth, I'm going to have you please take a seat for a moment. And invite Marion to come forward who is going to share with us about one of the ministries here in the parish. Thank you, Father. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If you ever attend the 5 o'clock Mass on Saturday, you might recognize me as one of your hospitality ministers. We're also known as ushers. And I know here at the 10 o'clock Mass, you have a couple of people that regularly help you out. I talked to Warren for a few minutes this morning, and he mentioned Shannon and Jean, and I know that Donna and John help out whenever asked. So if you're one of those people that gets that tap on the shoulder whenever they're running around right before Mass starts looking for help with the collection baskets, thank you. We really appreciate all that help. We'd like to get back to having an actual schedule for ushers, and that's why I'm here this morning asking for your help to do that. If we can get at least 16 people to volunteer to usher for the 10 o'clock Mass, that gives us a crew of four people for every Sunday, or Saturday if your regular Mass is the 5, or the 8 or the 12. We're recruiting people for all the Masses. It also means you'd only be asked to serve one Sunday a month, and we have a list of people that can pitch in if for whatever reason you can't be here on your assigned weekend. It's not a huge commitment of time. If you're ushering, we ask that you get here at least 15 minutes before Mass, and at least two of the four on that crew will probably be here 15 minutes after Mass. Now, I know that Warren and all the other people that pitch in regularly love serving this parish community, and they'll continue to do so. It's not only about offering the opportunity up for everyone, it's about creating a more efficient, organized way to prepare for Mass. Everything goes a little bit smoother if we know in advance that we have all the positions filled. So if your health allows you to be mobile enough to walk around the church area with a collection basket, I'm inviting you to please think about serving your parish community and come and find me in the narthex after Mass. I'll be set up at the end of the drink station on this side for the pancake breakfast, so grab your cup of coffee and come and see me. Thank you. Thank you, Marion, and all of those who just clapped have to stop and see her after Mass now. So she'll be out, as she said, uh, the pancake breakfast. We're having you sit down for just a little while so that I can wet your, wet your appetite a little bit to have a pancake in your mouth. But uh, you can speak with Marion out there in the narthex about uh, ministers of hospitality or ushers. It's an important ministry that we have here in the parish. And you have to be here at Mass anyway, so you might as well help out also, right? So, a good thing for us. I want to say thank you. There's a couple of families that have uh, come forward and offered to help organize our Thanksgiving meal. Thanksgiving is not that far away, right? So it may seem like it, but it's really not. Um, and so hopefully either next week or the week after we will have sign-up sheets for people in terms of what they can help to bring uh, for that Thanksgiving Day meal where we seek to serve those who may be in greater need than we ourselves are. But it's also, it's not just an opportunity to serve them uh, or people who may be in need in general, but it's also an opportunity if 
you have family that's a long ways away or, or whatever the case might be, you're also welcome to come on that Thanksgiving uh, late morning and early afternoon and partake in that Thanksgiving Day, day meal. I want to thank all of the people who helped with the, the cleanup yesterday. We started making sure that we're ready to go throughout uh, the winter and spring, uh, early spring months. Uh, began to clean up the grounds a little bit more. Um, and then on November the 19th, it's the last Saturday before Thanksgiving, we'll have our final leaf party, right? So we go out and we uh, collect all of the leaves on campus and it's oftentimes fun for the kids because then they can jump in the leaves also on that day anyway. So uh, an opportunity for you to help out with that. It's coming on November the 19th. It's a Saturday after the morning mass. To remember that All Saints Day also is coming up uh, just a little over a, a week away. So All Saints Day is Tuesday, November 1st. That is a holy day of obligation for each of us as Catholics. Um, and to remember, it's actually something that's grave to intentionally miss Mass then on a day of obligation, which all Sundays are a day of obligation also. Um, and then, so there will be a Monday Vigil Mass in Spanish at 7 p.m. And then on Tuesday itself, All Saints Day, a 9 a.m. Mass, the school will be here also, and then 7 p.m. Mass for those parents even of the school kids who may not have been able to be there while they were at work and for others who wouldn't be able to be there in the morning. Then on All Souls Day, it's not a holy day of obligation, but the following day is All Souls Day. We'll have our normal 8.30 a.m. Mass. It's an opportunity for us to come and pray for our loved ones who have gone before us also in faith, not abandoning them without our prayers, but assisting them uh, uh, with our prayers. And so that 8.30 a.m. Mass and then the Knights of Columbus will have a 6 p.m. Uh, memorial Mass for all of their members who have passed away in this past year, but remembering all of those who have gone before them also and their wives. And then at 7.30 uh, p.m. we will have an Ad Orientum Mass here in the church. And we'll have a uh, women's choir with us for that Ad Orientum Mass at 7.30 on All Souls Day. One more thing, um, the school is having an event also for, speaking of All Souls, where they're going to go to the cemetery on Saturday, November 5th. So the students and their families will be walking through the cemetery, placing paper bag luminaries at grave sites, praying at each grave site they visit, and then ending the day by praying a rosary for the holy souls in purgatory in the Holyrood Chapel. So it'll be at Holyrood Cemetery. If you would like someone to stop at a particular grave of a family member of yours or a friend of yours, please email Eileen Warner. And I think that your email address is in the narthex, right on that piece of paper. So there's a flyer that's out on the table in the narthex. You can uh, get her email address off of that and send the first and last name of the person you would like them to visit. And if you know it, the date of their death also. And they'll do everything that they can then to make sure that they stop by and visit the, the name of that person, that person's grave. Very good. Let's pray then our St. Michael prayer. It's on the back of your Source and Summit white books if you don't have it memorized. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.